Hello, welcome to this physics class one more time. And today we shall be looking at work energy and power. This class is sponsored by O3 Schools app. The only app you need while studying for your jam and uh the activation key costs 2500 naira it is easy to use it is secure your funds will definitely get your app activated and give you full access to a wide variety of features that you can find on the app such as being able to search for questions by topic um app having accurate answers and explanations to these questions and the novels you'll be reading for your jam and a lot more so go ahead activate your app and we can start on this journey together okay and now like i said work energy and power so let's start by defining these things what is work work is done whenever a force moves its point of application a distance in the direction of that force what that simply means is we have to have a box here to move this box from say this point a to a new point b i would have to apply a force once this force has actually moved this object from one point to another then we can say i have done work now on the other hand if i was to push against a wall or a building which obviously would not move then my work done in that case will be zero because for work to be done there are two agents necessary force and a distance if there is no distance, then there is no true work being done. Because mathematically, work done equals to work done equals to force times distance. So that tells you that if your distance is zero, zero times anything returns a value of zero. So the unit of work is joules, J O U L E S, short form, calculator J. And work is a scalar quantity. That's that for work. And please note, the force being applied and the distance being moved in must be parallel to each other. That means if my force is horizontal, my distance must also be horizontal. If my force is vertical, then my distance the object is moving must also be vertical. If your force and your distance happen to be perpendicular, then this is moment which actually exists in a totally separate topic. You try not to mix it two up. Now, the reason why this is important is that at times, your force will act on your object at an angle. Say my force is acting here at this angle, theta. In that case, I can't just use my force on its own. I will have to resolve it to the horizontal component so that I can match my horizontal displacement. And therefore, my work done in this case becomes F cos theta times S. Now, that is a basic and very important thing you must understand. The force and the displacement must always be parallel. That means if I was to be raising a weight off the ground, that means I'm taking it vertically upwards, then the force I'll be looking at in that case must be the weight, because you need to apply a force to the weight of an object to raise it so that becomes weight times height and that is what you must know about work and now we'll move on to energy what is energy energy is the ability or the capacity to do work that means while moving these objects these distances by applying force the thing that gives us the ability to do that in the first place is now energy now, there are so many types of energy, solar heat energy, thermal energy, mechanical energy, chemical energy. But while studying energy, we have to study the forms in which they appear. And the forms are basically two, potential and kinetic. What's the difference? On that kinetic energy, kinetic energy is the energy you have courtesy of your motion. Kinetic energy. Is the energy possessed by a moving body and its formula simply becomes 1 over 2 
mv squared. Half mv squared. 1 by 2 times the mass and the square of the velocity. That is kinetic energy. Now, on the other hand, potential energy is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its arrangement, position, or state. One more time. Potential energy is energy possessed by a body by virtue of its arrangement, position, or state. And the assessment as a potential energy. There is your chemical potential energy. There is electric potential energy. There is elastic potential energy. There is um, your magnetic potential energy. But right now, we are going to be focusing on just one of them, which is the gravitation potential energy. The rest of these are all stored individually on that different topics. The only one we are focusing on right now is your gravitation potential energy. And that's the energy being possessed by a body by virtue of its height above the ground. You raise a stone up. If you drop it, the stone has gained energy. That energy is referred to as gravitational potential energy. And its formula is mgh. Mass times acceleration to gravity times height. And now this leads us to one of the most important concepts in physics, which is the law of conservation of energy. And this law is quite simple. It states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can only be transformed from one form to another. That simply means that the sum of all the energy in a system remains constant. The energy is not going anywhere. It's not being created from nothing. And it's not being destroyed from nothing either. It is simply transforming from one appearance to another. Say, um, say for example, you have to iron your clothes. You plug in your iron, taking electrical energy. That electrical energy doesn't get wasted. It gets transformed into thermal energy heat, which you then use to press your clothes. Or you want to switch in your generator, for example. You put in fuel, chemical energy. Switching on this fuel makes your gene work, and you now have electrical energy. The electrical energy could be transformed to your fan, for example, to give you kinetic energy. It could be transferred to your bulb to give you light energy, to your heater to give you thermal energy. You can all see. Now, the important principle about this law is that if you have to start with 100 joules of energy, you should also be ending up with 100 joules of energy, albeit in a different form. So, you should say I have 100 joules. It just might no longer be how it started initially. That's the basic thing. Now, a good example or a good way to analyze this is to think about a stone being dropped from a certain height. Now, once the stone has been raised up, you remember, you notice that it has gravitational potential energy because of its height above the ground. And while I'm holding this stone at this height, all it has is potential energy, mg, and let's say this is the distance to the ground, capital H. That's what it has. And because I'm holding it at that height and it is not moving, its kinetic energy must be zero because velocity is zero. You see, this is now the maximum energy. Now, say I leave this stone, it begins to fall. As it falls, its speed is increasing and increasing and increasing. So at a certain point here, the potential energy would have reduced from what this value was before to a new value. However, the kinetic energy would have gained every single part of the potential energy that got lost. That means, as you are losing part of your energy, the energy is not going nowhere. It is simply being transformed into a different form of energy. The potential energy gets transformed into kinetic energy. And as this potential energy keeps on coming down, it's reducing, it's reducing, and it's reducing. Then at this point, right as it's about to hit the ground, its distance from the ground becomes zero. And as you are aware, mg times zero must give me what? Zero. So the potential energy gets here and reduces to a null value. It's now zero. But the kinetic energy, on the other hand, now reaches the maximum value. That means, at this point, all this potential energy has now been converted into purely kinetic energy. 
But the important principle to remember is that the total energy we have here will still be equal to the total energy we have here and again still be equal to the total energy we have here energy doesn't go missing potential energy as it's reducing if this was 100 here as it's reducing if it gets to 80 this guy must now become 20. the 20 it has lost between 180 gets transformed into kinetic and so as this kinetic keeps on increasing potential keeps on reducing until the potential becomes zero one more time while kinetic would have gained every single thing and now become 100. so that's a very very simple and accurate example of how the law of conservation of energy is applied and once we know that we can then look at the last important concept which is power power simply refers to the rate of doing work how fast you can perform your work the faster you do your work the more power you are said to have and while energy and work are measured in joules power however is measured in a totally new unit which is watts or capital letter w power is measured in watts and the formula for power is going to simply be work or energy simply divided by time work over time and if you remember work is force times distance so over time but from our primary school which you should still remember we always knew back then that speed equals to distance over time that means this particular guy there it alone represents speed or velocity which means that power must be equal to force times velocity and with these i believe we are ready now to assess our o3 school jam up and take some past questions to further enhance our understanding of the topic so let's do that so setting through your past question by topic like i said which you can do you can start with um 2000 question number nine the year 2000 question number nine this question states if the force and the velocity on a system are each reduced simultaneously by half the power of the system is what that means if say the force was f and velocity was v this p will be our power then if we were to reduce the force by half making it one over two f and also the velocity by half one over two v what happens to the power one times one one two times two four that means our power is reduced to a quarter one over four is a quarter and that's that see is that simple um for our second example a car of mass 800 kilograms a car of mass 800 kilograms attains a speed of 25 meters per second speed of 25 meters per second in 20 seconds the time is 20 seconds we have to find the power being developed in the engine now this question might seem a bit tricky because you remember that power should be force times velocity or work done over time i ask yourself okay how am i supposed to get those from this then you simply have to ask yourself all right what can i do can i find how far this vehicle would have moved in this interval you see how we reason it out take from what you know and try to work towards what you want i want to get power and then the power is force times velocity so i might know velocity how am i supposed to get force then you remember force equals mass times acceleration that means if i can get my acceleration i can get my force and you get acceleration, acceleration is change in velocity 
over time. See? So, quite simply, my mass is 800. My change velocity is that this car is moved from 0 to 25. So, 25 minus 0 all over the time, which is 20 seconds. And so, we know that 0 can cancel 0. That is made with 80 times 25. And if you press that into your calculator, quite simply, we know that 80 times 25 is 2000. So my force is 2000 newtons. And therefore, my power must be 2000 times the velocity, which is 25. So 2000 times 25 will give you 50,000 watts. And then when you take a look at your options, okay, and now when we take a look at our options, we notice our answer is not quite among the options. Now, this is to remind us that, again, we are only humans and mistakes are inevitable. Now, a key element in exams is to always be able to spot your mistakes and try and avoid them later on. Now, if we go through our questions, we we'll look here. These are our values. We went through this. I see this formula, mass and change velocity over time. And here you can notice this must be our mistake. Because 25 minus 0 is 25. But we similarly neglected to divide by the time, which is 2. You see? So small mistakes like that could lead to your answer not being in your options. That simply means our only error was that we did not divide by 2, which means this should be 80 times 25 all over 2. But we forgot that. And that gives you 1,000 Newton. And so here, rather than having 2,000, I should be having 1,000. And when I multiply by 25, I'm getting 25,000. And since my options are all in standard form, if I convert, move back one, two, three, four. I'll be 2.5 times 10 raised to the power 4 watts. And we see that's how. If you ever find yourself solving and the answer is doing your options, please do not give up and just randomly guess anything and move on. Instead, try to go through your solutions and see what your error might have been. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. This question is from 1997, question number 10. 1997, question 10. An electric pump, an electric water pump, an electric water pump rate 1.5 kilowatts. Once we hear the rate and we see the unit, most of that must be our power. So power is 1.5 kilowatts. And kilo simply means a thousand. So that's saying 1.5 times 1,000, which gives us 1,500 watts. So that's our power. And it lifts 200 kg. It lifts water of mass 200 kg through a vertical height of 6 meters in 10 seconds. But to find the efficiency of the pump, what's going on here? We have been told that this pump has this rate. This is the rating of the pump, but this is the actual thing it's doing for us. I want to find the efficiency that is based on what it is supposed to do, how much is it actually performing out of its innate abilities. And first of all, I must solve for the real power that I'm experiencing. And now, to solve a power, as remember, power equals to work or energy over time. Notice, I don't have any stage to solve for work here. But can I solve for energy? Yes. There's potential energy here. We are raising this water tray height. So that is mgh over time. So m is 200. g as usual is 10. h is 6. Over time, 10. 10 cancels 10. And 206 is 1,200 watts. That means, despite the fact that this pump is rated 1,500 watts, 
instead we're expressing a power of 1200 watts so how much power might we say is getting wasted to answer that question all we simply have to look at this now we know efficiency or we can write it in weights efficiency is always the output over the input times 100 that's the general formula for efficiency no matter the system so the output is 1200 but the input rating the actual rating is 1500 times 100 so zeros cancel zeros um if you like you could also say 3 into 12 is 4 3 into 15 is 5 so you'll be having 4 times 100 400 over 5 when you divide this you get 80 percent which is our option c okay let's proceed even further and take a couple more examples okay um now for this one we're looking at um question goes this is by the way this is from 1998 question number nine 1998 question number nine a man whose mass is 80 kg a man whose mass is 80 kilograms climbs a staircase in 20 seconds he climbs up the staircase in 20 seconds and expends power of 120 watts we have to find the height of the staircase 80 kg climbing 20 seconds 120 watts find the height quite simply as you know based on what i have i know that my power must be energy if i'm climbing potential energy mgh about time to so 80 120 equals 80 g is 10 times h which you do not know over 20. let zero cancel zero so year one to year four so 120 equals to 40 h over 40 over 40. so h equals to 120 over 40 which is three meters our option d so you see just keep your steps in mind and slowly carefully solve your questions okay the next question we shall try our hands on comes from 1995 question 44 as again you can see in your app this one states that a body of mass 40 kg has been dragged along the road by a rope inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal if the frictional force between the box and the floor is 100 newton now our frictional force of 100 newton and the tension in the rope is 300 newton we have to find out how much work is done by dragging the box a distance of four meters now the first thing we realize is that from the diagram we can see now up this tension in the rope is not horizontal it's at an angle which means we have to resolve it and find the horizontal component here's 60 degrees and here's the tension and for the real force must be the tension cos 60 and the tension is 300 cos 60 and one more time why trigonometry is important you have to know the value of cos 60 because cos 60 is simply 1 over 2 which means our force is 150 newtons now once we know this we must then remember based on the way i'm applying my force my force is being opposed by friction which implies that the true force dragging this will not be 150 the true force the net force will be this force minus the frictional force 150 minus 100 you always have to overcome friction before you can move so the force that we are trying to apply is 50 newton therefore if i'm going to move this box four meters my work done becomes 
my real force, which is 50, times the displacement, 4, which gives me 200 joules. Okay? And with this, let's take one last example, and we shall be able to say that we have truly learned everything we need to know about the topic that is work energy and power. Now, for this question, we have been told an object of mass 100 grams, and here is one of the places where we need to remember conversion 100 grams. We do not solve in grams, solve in kilograms. So we divide by 1000, 0.1 kg. Okay, it is projected vertically upwards from the ground and it has a velocity of 20 meters per second. Velocity equals to 20 meters per second at a height of 10 meters at a height of 10 meters but I've calculated its initial kinetic energy at ground level now if you remember the diagram we drew we said at ground level the kinetic energy is maximum while the potential energy is zero what that must mean is that at this point x where the height is now 10 and this is the velocity if i was to find the potential energy at this point plus this kinetic energy at this point it will give me the kinetic energy at ground level i don't have to do much solving all i simply have to do is that potential energy at set point must be mgx and kinetic energy at set point will be 1 over 2 mvx squared so going through it m is 0 0.1 as we have up here g is 10 as usual and x is 10 plus 1 over 2 times m remains 0 0.1 while my velocity becomes 20 so 20 squared so calculator 10 times 10 is 100 100 times 0 0.1 is 10 while over here Personal calculator there, if you can't solve that with your head to avoid mistakes, we know that that will be 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 times 20 squared, which is 20 times 20. And that gives 20 joules. So quite simply, 10 plus 20 equals 30 joules. Option C, the kinetic energy at that point is 30 joules. And at this point, I'd like to say thank you for attending this class and listening to us. Please remember, both three schools jab up. My name is Kadori Kanae Thank you for listening.